Hello, soldier. Thanks to our previous guides, you're already familiar with bullets and shells. So now it's time to talk about more exotic, but no less fearsome, ammunition. Like rockets, for example. Although pilots, tankers and sailors may use rockets in totally different situations, they all agree on one thing. Rockets are one of the most nefarious types of armament. A multiple rocket launcher system will strip the paint from a tank, an ATGM will find its target even behind a hill, and the small I-16, nicknamed Isha Chok, will tear through a heavy bomber in seconds. Given such impressive results, the rockets should have become the player's first choice for armament long ago, but even these demons have their drawbacks. Let's take a look. Evil starts with a press of a button, and by default the rocket launcher command is set to the number 4 for aviation and to R for ground and naval vehicles. You can reassign keys in the control settings in the armament tab. Everything is set up, and we are now rising into the sky where so many different types of rockets have soared for the first time in the War Thunder. First off, we should mention that pilots currently don't have any terrifying guided missiles. Thank you, Jesus! It's possible that they will appear at some point in the future, but right now we're only discussing crude but deadly unguided rockets. High Explosive Rockets the name fully conveys what happens when one of these rockets hits its target, an explosion. The heavier the explosive inside it, and the higher the caliber of the rocket, the bigger the explosion. Look at the card, it's the same as for shells. Here you'll find two vital stats for high explosive rockets, the amount of explosive and its armor penetration, represented by the thickness of the armor that the explosion can breach in a direct hit. Speaking of breaches, in the mechanics in War Thunder, a sphere is created around the impact point of any explosive shell, and beams from the center of the sphere seek out the most vulnerable point in the armor. So if a high-caliber high-explosive rocket hits the base of a tank, it has the potential to blow the vehicle up from the inside out. But only if the armor on the base is thin enough, and the distance from the impact point to the breach point isn't so large that it minimizes the force of the shock wave. The mechanic is quite realistic on the whole, and based on what we've said, what you should do when firing high-explosive rockets is not to take aim at a particular spot, but to seek out the largest weekly armored area on the tank. Surprisingly, this is the hull roof and turret on ground vehicles, or basically any part of an aircraft. An aircraft will simply be blotted out of existence. Don't forget about shots. Though they are not visible, they can still inflict damage, especially to lightly armored ground vehicles and aircrafts. They spread farther than the explosion wave, and their amount depends on the rocket caliber. We've already understood where to fire. Now let's talk about how to fire. It pretty much comes down to experience, but we can give you some helpful tips. Number 1. Practice in a test flight or in the training ground. It may sound basic, but practicing really helps you learn how to hit a target. Number 2. Don't forget that the rocket's convergence corresponds to the convergence of the frontal armament of the aircraft, but it's more complicated than that. The friend of the high-explosive rocket is also its enemy. To achieve major high-explosive damage, you need to increase the rocket's weight and caliber, and this significantly slows its flight and makes these rockets far from exact. If you set the convergence at 800 meters, there is no way that every high-explosive rocket will reach this mark without going off course. This is another good reason to drop closer to the target, especially if it's on the ground when using high-explosive rockets. Armor-piercing rockets. You can try to run from bombs. You can stop a high-explosive rocket with solid armor, but if a tank encounters an armor-piercing rocket, it normally ends badly for him. Difficult to use, varied, and fearsome. That's armor-piercing rockets. They come in three types. Good old solid shells, APHEs, and the pinnacle of technical achievement, hits. These do damage in the same way as similarly named shells shrapnel, minor explosive damage, or a high explosive stream. So, how do you fire them? This is where you need to pay attention. Fire them based on the striking angle on the vehicle's armor. You are essentially firing an ordinary armor-piercing shell with a jet thrust. And when the rocket strikes, all the same characteristics are calculated as on the ground. So don't be surprised by the ricochet if you make a mistake during an attack or by a smaller number of shrapnel even when you destroy a target. 
The caliber isn't all that high. And speaking of destruction, the armor-piercing ability of the rocket is shown in the card and deserves special attention. Since fuel burns up over further distances and your chances of breaching the target decrease along with it. The exception to this, of course, is hit rockets, where the striking angle isn't so important and armor penetration doesn't drop over longer distances. However, pilots do have a significant head start, in the form of the relatively thin armor on the whole roof and turret. The sum up, the difficulty in attacking and the need to accurately strike the target is compensated by the merits of the armor-piercing rockets themselves. They weigh much less than high-explosive rockets, which makes them faster and more accurate, especially in air battles, where every kilo counts. They are perfect if you've got a feel for aiming and if hitting the target is no longer a challenge. Fragmentation Rockets in general, all of the previously mentioned rockets can be used against fragile aircraft, but some rockets have been specially designed for aerial targets. The main destructive element of this rocket is the cloud of shrapnel it creates. Anti-air rockets frequently have a self-destruct mechanism, so that the rocket detonates several seconds after launching, even if it hasn't struck anything. Consider the German GR-29. It has a self-destruct fuse, and the range for detonation can be set in battle, in the vehicle selection menu. We recommend setting it to between 400 and 600 meters. Then you just have to go to the set distance and launch the rocket a little higher than the target in order to adjust for the decent and, even if you miss by a few meters, you still get to enjoy blasting the enemy to pieces. Of course, this isn't a modern fire-and-forget rocket, and it does demand precision. But destroying air targets this way is far easier than with other rockets. Rockets like these aren't only on German aircraft. Wherever you see the detonation range setting, this means that there is a self-destruct fuse and that this rocket is suitable for similar air attacks. But using these rockets to attack ground forces is a bad idea, because their primary goal is to deal total damage over a large area and not to pierce armor. That's why these rockets will only be dangerous for SPAGs and weakly armored vehicles. Please note that in AB when you press the launch key once, one rocket will leave the suspension. In RB and SB, rockets are fired in pairs, and one key press releases one rocket from each wing. So that's the situation in the sky. The choice isn't so huge in terms of rockets, but effectiveness is key and it is indisputable. Now let's drop back down to Earth, where rockets have also taken root. But the tanker's arsenal also includes guided missiles, which have their own features. Which isn't surprising, given that the development of this type of ammunition started with ground forces. War Thunder has the first two generations of anti-tank guided missiles, or simply ATGMs. First-gen ATGMs are 100% manually controlled. I, you need to align three points – the crosshair, the missile, and the target. In War Thunder, the commands for moving the rudder of these missiles will be the same as the movement keys for the armored vehicle. Movement of the vehicle itself will be blocked during this time. But the second generation is much simpler, you just need to keep the crosshair on the target and control of the missile will be handled automatically. And you can fire on the move. Incidentally, arcade battle players won't see a difference between the ATGM generations. All guided missiles in this mode are controlled with the mouse. All guided missiles boost roughly the same firepower. They have a hit feeling and are capable of effectively taking out all armored targets in the game. With the exception of rear tanks with ERA, in that case, one missile might not be enough. How to fire? Remember, the launches are often far from perfectly aligned with the aiming line. Immediately after launching, the missile is controlled by autopilot, which takes it to the required trajectory. This takes some time at a specific distance. This feature can cause problems when firing at nearby targets. This blind spot depends on the specific vehicle and can be learned through experience. After that, it's smooth sailing. Keep the enemy in the crosshair or move the sight slightly in front of the movement target. And maybe you'll hear the pitiful whimper of the tanker when he realizes that the imminent death is coming for him. In terms of other mechanics, ATGMS are identical, but the missiles themselves virtually always vary in flight speed, range and maneuverability, although you can't tell without making a direct combustion between them. Which is why we're not going to go into that here. Unguided Rockets 
More about the most boring type of rockets? You couldn't be more wrong. Unlike air rockets, unguided ground rockets don't have armor-piercing modifications because they just don't need them. Don't forget, we're on the ground, where weight categories are unlimited. The same rules apply. The more explosives in the rocket, the more armor it can break through. But while in aviation the supply of rockets is severely reduced due to restrictions in the take of weight, on the ground multiple launch rocket systems MLRC, don't suffer from a shortage of shots, and they can afford to maintain continuous heavy fire on the target which, if it doesn't destroy it, will definitely cause such critical damage that it will be easy just to abandon the tank. The most important thing is to try to aim at the hull roof or surfaces closest to it. Egg the turret sides. So after blowing up on them, the shockwave goes to the most vulnerable areas of the armor, even if the target is so well armored that it seems pointless to fire on it. Don't forget the psychological impact of rockets. It's huge. And the last thing you've got to remember. The rockets you've got are high explosive. High explosive. Understand? We're sure you already knew a lot about rockets, but we hope that now you can use them even more effectively. We've added links to a handy article about high explosive damage in the description. It supplements the information given in this guide. That's it for today. Class, dismissed. I should go.